the difference between knowing and not knowing is is big. When you when you're raised in Africa, knowledge is hard. And then you fight for knowledge. My research on river blindness actually uh, dates back to the early 90s where uh, I'm a native of Sudan and uh, river blindness is uh, endemic to Sudan. River blindness is an interesting disease actually. It's a disease that's caused by a parasitic worm. The larvae of this worm is transmitted by a fly which is called the black fly. So the disease, we always find it next to the rivers where the flies that transmit the disease are. The ultimate outcome of the disease is blindness. Since the first time I saw um, a river blindness patient, I was on their side. I was immediately drawn to the, um, to the disease and decided to do something about it. We started treatment in 1998. In 2006, we started monitoring every year. And fortunately, after 12 years of treatment, last year we interrupted the transmission of the disease in Sudan. Our publication last year was, is a landmark publication because it's the first time a tropical disease has been interrupted in its endemic country. I consider myself lucky. It has been the focus of my research career for the last 20 years. And I got to live actually and see the success of, of your work. To be part of a successful project like this, it's a lifetime chance, so I'm lucky to be part of that. In Alabama, I was doing advanced research, full-time advanced research. When I came here uh, to Ohio University in Zanzibar, there was no lab, actually. There was no biology lab for research when I came here, so I had to start from scratch. I had to involve the undergraduate students in my research. I started taking the students, actually anatomy and physiology students and microbiology students out to the local public parks and playgrounds. And we started collecting uh, samples, soil samples, swab samples from the playground and public parks. The idea is to screen for contaminants. There's no much research on the contaminants of playgrounds and public parks. So we, the students actually collected, so it's, it's a process of, it's part of their curriculum basically. They come to the lab and they do part of the initial screening in the lab, part of their microbiology lab, and then we select the students who, are, who show interest in the process to actually go into the research lab. And then we do further typing of the, of the contaminants, in collaborating with the FDA actually, in our FDA lab was interested in actually working with us on this because this provides the baseline data on what's out there in the, in, the, in the community, basically. We collaborate in this project with the local health department, so whatever we find, we report to them, which is going to be like an, an, an early warning system for the local department. We go to the exact same location every year, so that we have accumulating data. So we'll be able to, to study the dynamics of, of this contaminants in the environment as well. I've been doing great, I mean, in terms of adapting to uh, teaching and research or, or trying to create an interface between them and make it actually part of the class. Teaching is, and, and I consider that myself, teaching is usually a mission, not a profession. It's not just a job, it's a mission. Right?